This is the continuation of our lecture. Electric charges, they exist inside an electric field. For them, up and down, higher or lower, above or below, those are words that depend on where they are inside the electric field. We measure heights, electric heights, not in meters. We measure them in volts, V, with respect to a reference level that is completely arbitrary. Arbitrary. We measure drops between two points also in volts, difference in electric heights like this one. We say the drop from A to B is the height of A in volts minus the height of B in volts as well. The point is that voltage is the electric height of a point in the circuit with respect to a reference a reference point that is absolutely arbitrary. In the past, electric power networks were the only components the electrical engineer would work with, and they were connected to the planet, to Earth, to ground. So it made sense to choose the planet as the reference for volts, the zero volt point. That was arbitrary, and it still is in electric power networks, ground is the reference node. However, in cases like an iPod or an iPhone, in those cases, the device is not connected to the planet, so it doesn't make sense talking about, but in that case, we choose arbitrarily any point in the circuit of the device as the reference one. Yes, I know it is customary to call that reference point Whatever that is, still the ground sometimes, even though it's not really connected to the planet. Arbitrarily chosen, and we stick to it. Once we choose it, we don't change it for the rest of the solution of the circuit. Now, heights and the electric field. Please notice the asterisk in this sentence. Positive electric charges, they slide downhill, like skiers, eh? Or like snowboarders. They slide downhill, pulled down by the electric field. Imagine these devices, which we have not introduced formally. In each one of them, I have um, represented with this plus and minus, which one of the two terminals is electrically higher in volts. In this case, this terminal of the device is higher than this one, more volts. And in this case, this terminal is higher than this one, electrically speaking, all right? And this one is higher electrically than this one. Well, as we've said, that positive electric charges, they roll downhill. So electric charges across this element will flow this way from high to low. And on this one, also from high to low. And in this one, from high to low. Always positive electric charges are sliding downhill like skiers or boarders. You've never seen a skier actually moving uphill, have you now? They always slide downhill. Well, come to think of it, that is true unless they are riding a source, like a skier riding a leaf chair, eh? Well, for electric charges, a leaf chair is a source. They ride the source uphill, pushed by the source itself. We can be represented in electric circuit theory with symbols like this one. In each one of these sources, we are representing which of the two terminals is higher. In this case, this is higher than this one. In this case, this side is higher than this one. And in this case, this side is higher than this one. Those sources will try to push electric charges uphill like that, like this, like a lift. Eh? Sometimes they will not succeed, but we will talk about that later. They try. Well, it is the drop 
between two points in the electric field that actually determines that charges will slide down through the field. They flow downwards. That flow of electric charges is what we call the electric current, charges in motion. Electric current is measured in how many coulombs pass by through a checking point per sec. We measure that, of course, in coulombs per second, and we call that unit ampere, also amp. A current of skiers would be how many skiers pass by a checking point per second. We would measure that in skiers per second, eh? Well, but the question is, I put an asterisk in that sentence before that says positive electric charges, but actually, who is who is moving? At first, scientists thought that it was positive charges, the ones that were moving, and they were moving downhill, up to Ben Franklin thought that. But actually, nowadays, we know that positive electric charges inside conductors are firmly bound to the structure of the material. They are very unlikely to move. The ones that are moving inside a conductor are most of the time the negatively charged electrons. And they move uphill. Interesting. But the effect is the same. Having negative charges moving uphill is exactly the same electrically as having positive charges moving downhill. The effect is the same at a macro level, and the equations had already been written, said the physicists. The papers were released, the books were written. It was quite a mess, actually, to rewrite everything to take into account this when the effect was just the same. So, by convention, in electrical engineering and in physics, we describe electric currents as the hypothetical direction of motion of positive electric charges moving downhill in the electric field. By the way, the charge in one electron is a tiny little drop of nothing. It's 1.602 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. To visualize how tiny that is, so let's compute how many electrons would be necessary to make one coulomb. One coulomb needs 6.22 billions of billions of electrons. Can you think of that? Well, now let's get some perspective, all right? If we measure with an ammeter the current through a cable, and it turns out to be 7 amps, that means 7 coulombs per second. That means that 43 billions of billions of electrons are passing by every second, actually 43.5, but who's counting? Imagine the current is flowing to the right of 7 amps. The meaning of that is that electrons are flowing to the left at a rate of 43.5 billions of billions of electrons per second. We almost always ignore the bottom, and we consider in technology only the top.